Hi to all. So this now is the last topic of anatomy and physiology, which is the reproductive system. Being the last topic for anaphysio, ito naman ang inyong karugtong na topic when you reach your level 2 for maternal and child nursing. The reproductive system's main function is reproduction or production of offspring. Most organ systems of the body function almost continuously to maintain the well-being of the individual. However, a reproductive system, it appears to slumber until puberty. So, hindi pa siya talaga gumagana. But, when puberty strikes, reproductive organs now become functional. Ano ba ang edad usually ng puberty? On the average, sa males, 12 to 14. While in females, 12 to 13 years old. So, let us now discuss each of the reproductive organs ng male and female. The testes. The tunica albuginea in the testes is a fibrous capsule surrounding each of the testes. And seminiferous tubules inside are the actual sperm-forming factories. Rete testes is another set of tubules where seminiferous ones empty. Ibig sabihin, yung sperm na lalabas from the testes up to the external part of the body during ejaculation will now enter the rete testes para makalabas sa penis. And lastly, in the testes also are interstitial cells which produce androgens or testosterone. These are the male hormones. So please remember, ang pinaka-importanting function ng testes when we talk about reproduction is the production of sperm and hormone testosterone. Now, usually, the testes is housed inside the scrotum. We have two, the right and the left. Nagde-descend yan o bumababa ang testes sa scrotum by age 34 to 38 weeks AOG, age of gestation, meaning 34 to 38 weeks intrauterine life. Nag-uumpisang mag-descend ang testes down the scrotum. If undescended, nagkakaroon ng condition ang batang lalaki na ang tawag ay cryptorchidism. Dapat kasi kapag kinapa ang testes sa loob ng scrotum, nakababa siya. Usually, the left testes is slightly larger and lower than the right. Ginagawa ang testicular self-examination din, usually in early adolescence. And kapag pinapalpate ang testes, it should feel firm, smooth, and egg-shaped. Next is the duct system. So ang duct system, ito yung dinadaluyan ng sperm para makalabas siya through the penis via ejaculation. First is epididymis. This provides temporary storage of immature sperm. And while in the sperm or while in the epididymis, about 20 days, doon siya nagmamature, gaining the ability to swim. Because sperms should be good swimmers because they travel all the way from the reproductive organ ng male, tapos lalabas siya, papasok ng reproductive organ ng female, and doon magsiswim pa din siya. Next is the ductus deferens. The ductus deferens or the vas deferens, they propel live sperm during ejaculation from epididymis to urinary bladder and enclose along with blood vessels and nerves in a connective tissue called spermatic cord. Sa lalaki, maaari yang gupitin. Ito yung tinatawag na vasectomy or permanent ligation for females or for males. Ang counterpart naman ito sa babae, yung tubal ligation, ang kinakat naman doon, are the fallopian tubes. Urethra is the last part of the duct system 
it extends from the base of the urinary bladder to the penis and carries sperm and urine to exterior body part. So, sa lalaki, yung nilalabasan ng ihi, yun din ang nilalabasan ng sperm palabas ng katawan. There are accessory structures of the male reproductive system and one of which is the seminal vesicles. It's found at the base of the bladder and joins ductus deferens which then produces semen or seminal fluid. This nourishes and activates sperm. Also, the prostate which encircles the upper part of urethra and below urinary bladder secretes another fluid that plays a role in activating sperm. Yung pinuproduce na semen ng seminal vesicles at yung fluid ng prostate glands are very important to nourish and activate sperm. On the other hand, si bulbo-urethral glands ay meron ding sinesecrete. But this time, ito naman yung thick, clear mucus. It cleanses urethra of acidic urine and serves as a lubricant during sexual intercourse. Take note that the urethra is where urine is also expelled. And urine is acidic in nature. So kung dadaan dun yung sperm, imagine acidic yung environment, baka madaling mamatay yung sperm. Therefore, the function of the bulbo urethra is very significant to make sure that sperm is still active and alive. The semen now, yan yung nakikita na ine-ejaculate ng males. We do not specifically see the semen because semens are microscopic. The semen is a milky, white, sticky mixture of sperm and accessory structure secretions. In a single ejaculate, approximately 2 to 5 ml of semen is present. At doon sa semen na yon, there are about 50 to 100 million sperms in each ml. Next is the external genitalia, the penis. It's the organ of copulation. It's the organ of sexual intercourse. Sa babae, ang organ of copulation or organ of sexual intercourse ay ang vagina. Ang penis din ang erectile tissue ng lalaki. With sexual excitement, blood flow to penis increases and this causes dilation of the arteries which then contracts the muscles resulting in an erection. Sa babae naman, clitoris ang kanilang erectile tissue. Yung glans penis is the end and the prepuce is the foreskin na kung magpapasircumcise, ito yung tinatanggal. Scrotum houses the testes. It's rigid, skin covered. It's a muscular pouch suspended from the perineum. The scrotum supports the testes and it regulates temperature of sperm. When cold, nagko contract, no, to move close to the body. And kapag naman hot or mainit, it relaxes and falls away from the body. In the photo also, you will see the internal structure of the penis which contains several muscles that contracts, responsible for erection and also kapag nag-iihe or urination. Two, corpora cavernosa and one, corpus spongiosum specific sa urethral opening. Spermatogenesis is an important occurrence in males during puberty because spermatogenesis is when production of sperm begins. Ito yung pagkakataon kung saan yung anterior pituitary gland nagsisecrete ng FSH. This continues throughout life. That's why in males, sperm production begins in puberty and it doesn't and kasi nagko-continue siya lifetime. In this photo, we see the typical parts of the sperm. We have the head. Yan yung importanteng dumidikit doon sa egg to penetrate an egg. The middle section, mitochondria for energy, and the flagella or the tail. The tail is important so they can swim.
Next is testosterone production. Testosterone is the hormone of males. It's produced by interstitial cells and responsible for secondary sex characteristics. When we say secondary sex characteristics, ito yung mga physical body changes. During this time, which is puberty, nagsistimulate naman ng production nito ay ang luteinizing hormone or the LH. So please recall that FSH is responsible for spermatogenesis while LH is important for testosterone production. Yung spermatogenesis, nagpo-produce na sila ng sperm. Big sabihin, maaari na silang ma-impregnate, no? mag-impregnate ng babae. While yung testosterone naman, nakakaroon na ng changes sa physical characteristics. Voice changes, there's increased hair growth, lumalaki ang muscles, bumibigat ang skeleton. Let's now go to the female reproductive system. Looking at the external genitalia, here are several important structures. The mons pubis is where the pubic hair is, but beneath that mons pubis, pag kinapayan, nandiyan ang symphysis pubis. The symphysis pubis is an important bone landmark. Dahil sa likod niya, nakatago ang non-pregnant uterus. That's why in a non-pregnant woman, you can never palpate her uterus. Pero kapag nag-umpisang mabuntis ang babae, lumalaki ang uterus kasi nagkakaroon ng growth, si baby in particular sa loob, the uterus now will rise out of the pelvis. It will rise out of the symphysis pubis. So mag-uumpisang mahalata na lumalaki ang puson. And it all starts doon sa measurement ng symphysis pubis. Now, usually kailan yan nahahalata sa babae if pregnant siya? Uterus normally rises out of the symphysis pubis by 12 weeks of pregnancy or by the third month of pregnancy. Next is prepuce, yan ang foreskin. Kung sa lalaki, sinacircumcise, pwede rin sa babae but not usual. Clitoris, ang erectile tissue, ang um, counterparts sa lalaki ng erectile tissue nila, penis. Labia, majora and labia minora, yan yung mga folds of skin. Next, we have six openings. Ano yung six openings sa female reproductive system? First is the urethral opening. Do not be mistaken, the urethra is inside, but what we see, yung butas, is the urethral opening or the urethral orifice. Diyan lumalabas ang ihi. Pero pwedeng magpasok dyan ng Foley catheter. Next, we have the two skin's glands and the two Bartholin's glands, which are again, mga orifice or opening. So, apat na yon. Important for lubrication. Next, we have the vaginal vestibule the vaginal orifice. So, vagina ang organ of copulation or organ of sexual intercourse. So, jaan pinapasok ang penis. But bukod sa penis, maaring magpasok ng um, mga speculums or instruments to check or may mga vaginal medications or even yung fingers or hands ng doktor um, kung mag-check, for example, in pregnancy or some pelvic exams or even with foreplay. If the couple would want, no, they can also have insertions where? In the vagina. Ano yung mga lumalabas dyan? Lumalabas dyan ang menstruation. Lumalabas din dyan yung baby. Okay? And then, lahat ng ipinasok mo na speculum or whatever you used in the foreplay. And then, we have the hymen. The hymen is a very thin tissue covering the vagina. 
and uh, ang hymen, it tears off easily. For example, kapag nag-menstruate ang babae, torn ang hymen. Or even if no menstruation, um, sometimes external activities or injuries can torn hymen or can tear the hymen. Next, we have the forche. Yung forche, yan yung either napupunit or ginugupit kapag nanganganak ang babae. So, kapag napunit yan, during birth, laceration. Kung ginupit naman siya during birth, yun yung episiotomy. And of course, whether ginupit or napunit, intentional or accidental, kailangan siyang tinatahe during uh, birth or after birth or delivery. The space between the forche hanggang anus is called the perineum or the perineal area. Next is the internal genitalia. There are four parts of the internal genitalia. Vagina, uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. Vagina, again, is the organ of copulation, uh, as mentioned earlier. Uterus now, let's consider the uterus, no? There are three layers. The three layers are endometrium, myometrium, and perimetrium, as shown in the photo. Yung endometrium, yan yung buwan buwan kumakapal during the menstrual cycle. Ang nagpapakapal dyan is the LH or the luteinizing hormone. And pag yan ay kumapal pero wala namang dumating na sperm, hindi na fertilize at walang implantation, hindi buntis yung babae, therefore magsashed off siya at nagiging menstruation. Kung buntis naman yung babae, endometrium is the area kung saan typically na i-implant yung growing fetus. Myometrium contains muscles. So, ang myometrium, yan yung nagko-contract. Very important to contract, especially during labor and delivery. The perimetrium is the outermost layer for protection. Aside from the three layers, meron ding three areas ang uterus. First is the cervix. Second is the body. And third is the fundus. The cervix is the cuello ng matres. It's a pinpoint opening which is normally dilating and effacing during birth. When you say dilate, ibig sabihin, kailangan niyang bumuka. When you say efface, kailangan niyang numipis. So, kailan dapat mangyari yun pag manganak na ang babae. The cervix also is a fragile tissue. Maaring magkaroon ng abnormal proliferation of cells dyan, which is cervical cancer. Now, ang um, cervical cancer Ang maganda lang sa kanya, meron ng vaccine against it, which is the vaccine against the human papilloma virus. Next is the body of the uterus. Yung body ng uterus, yan yung nag enlarge lumalaki, lalo na kapag may nafoform na baby. It provides the room for growth of the fetus. And lastly, yung pinakatuktok ng matres is the fundus. Importante yan kasi dyan natin na-estimate kung gaano na kalaki yung baby sa loob. Remember kanina, I have mentioned that when we measure, we start, no, gaano kalaki yung uterus na ng babae, from the symphysis pubis, we get a tape measure, put the zero mark there, and then i-measure gaano na kalaki ang uterus from the symphysis pubis to the fundus. And the size of that could estimate the size of the baby inside and also estimate the age or gaano na katagal na buntis yung babae. Uh, and uh, again, take note no, na non-palpable na talaga siya. Pero kapag buntis, no, nag-shift out 
rises out of the symphysis pubis. Next, we have the fallopian tubes right and left. We have the infundibulum, ampulla, and isthmus. Jaan, ang usual site of fertilization. So, yung sperm nang gagaling ng vagina, yung egg nang gagaling ng ovary. They usually meet in the ampulla of the fallopian tubes. Ito yung ginugupit naman kapag uh, for permanent ligation ang babae. As mentioned earlier, no, um, ibig sabihin, nawawala ng chance na mag-meet ang egg and sperm. And lastly, ovaries, right and left, ang counterpart niya sa lalaki are the testes. Kung ang testes nagpo-produce ng sperm cells, ang ovaries nagpo-produce ng egg cells. Kung ang testes nagpo-produce ng hormone na androgen testosterone, ang ovaries nagpo-produce ng hormone na estrogen and progesterone. But take note that the ovaries produce egg cells beginning in intrauterine life compared sa mga lalaki. Sa mga lalaki, kailan lang nagpo-produce ang testes ng sperm cells? Puberty. Pero sa mga babae, intrauterine life pa lang, complete na ang ovaries. But all of these are immature. Nagmamature ang egg cell ng babae pag puberty. Now, in the uterus, gano'n na karami ang egg cell ng babae? 5 to 7 million eggs. But they are all immature. Nung pinanganak yung babae, namamatayan siya ng egg cells. Ilan lang ang natira? Around 2 million immature eggs. Ang isang 7-year-old na babae, gano na lang karami ang eggs. Around 500,000 immature eggs. And then, kapag nag-puberty, nagmamature with the help of FSH. Pag nagmature, nag-ovulate, lalabas siya ngayon from the surface of the ovary, ang importanteng gumawa naman nun at tumulong sa kanya for ovulation to occur, LH. FSH matures the egg during puberty. LH releases the mature egg from the surface of the ovary called ovulation. At pag nag-ovulate na ang babae, maaari na siyang mabuntis. Pero, gano'n na lang karami yung egg niya, unti-unting namamatay yan. At 22 years old, gano'n na lang kadami ang egg cell ng babae, siguro mga around 300,000 na lang. Unti-unti nauubos yan, pag wala ng egg cell ang babae, that's menopause. The breast is an important structure of the reproductive system when it comes to milk production. Prolactin from the anterior pituitary gland produces milk. Oxytocin from the posterior pituitary gland ejects milk or responsible for the letdown reflex. During pregnancy, may katulong pa from the placenta hormone which is the HPL or the human placenta lactogen. Also, the breast enlarges at puberty. Start din ang secondary sex characteristics ng babae. But during pregnancy, it further enlargement, it, it further enlarges with the help of the hormones also, estrogen and progesterone, para merong room for more milk storage. The breast also in women is a site of possible cancer. Breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer death among women. But with careful assessment, maaari nating ma-prevent or ma-detect early uh, at magkaroon ng magandang prognosis with breast cancer. Breast self-exam should be done and taught to all women, starting menarche or puberty. Kailan dapat nagpo-perform ng breast self-exam? It should be done every month, 7 to 10 days after the first day of mens. Dahil halos kakatapos lang ng mens nito, hindi congested ang katawan ng babae, so valid yung findings upon palpation. Mammography now is another 
way to detect breast cancer, especially kung may history of breast cancer ang family. Mammography is um, a machine with the use of a machine and there should be at least a baseline mammography at age 35. Here are the differences sa male and female reproductive structures or functions. So, ang gonads ng lalaki, testes, which produce sperm and testosterone. Sa babae naman, ang gonads nila, ovaries, producing egg cells, and estrogen and progesterone. When we talk about production of sperm and egg, ang lalaki, puberty, ang babae, intrauterine life pa lang, kumpleto na. Pareho, nagmamature yan at puberty. Function of FSH sa lalaki, production of sperm. Sa babae naman, maturation of immature eggs. Sa LH, testosterone production for secondary sex characteristics in male. And in females, it assists in ovulation or letting the mature egg set free from the surface of the ovary, plus thickening of endometrium to prepare for implantation. And lastly, kailan natatapos ang production sa males? Eggs, the sperm cells continuously produce throughout life. Sa female naman, it ends at menopause. When we talk about reproduction, the menstrual cycle is an important cycle that occurs in a female para maging possible ang impregnation. Menarche usually starts at 12 to 13, pero it can occur in some women as early as 9 or as late as 17. Pag naubos na lahat ng egg cells, which is with menopause, usually at age 40 to 55 or minsan average of 51 years old. There are four phases of menstruation but all these will be discussed further when you reach your maternal and child nursing sa level 2. The four phases are proliferative, secretory, ischemic, and the menstrual flow phase. Everything starts with the hypothalamus kasi nagre-release siya ng releasing hormones that signals increase in estrogen and progesterone. Ito ngayon yung negative feedback. Now, as the anterior pituitary gland receives the impulse from the hypothalamus, mag-uumpisa ngayon siyang mag-secrete ng FSH and LH. Ang FSH at LH ay parehong pumupunta ng ovary. FSH matures egg and the LH initiates ovulation and thickening of endometrium. At the same time, ang cervical mucus ng babae nagpapalit, no? nagiging uh, malabnaw. Because from a thick consistency, nagiging thin consistency during ovulation. This is very important because a thin cervical mucus will allow sperm survival para madali siyang makaswim papasok ng vagina, cervix, body of uterus, hanggang fallopian tube. The third phase is the ischemic phase kung saan yung sperm nandudoon waiting for an egg. No? Mangyayari ang fertilization. If no fertilization will happen, mag-shed off ang lahat, mamamatay yung lahat ng kumapal na structure, kaya magkakaroon ng menstrual flow. If no fertilization occurs, it will cause now decrease in all hormones again. And then after 28 days, sasabihin na naman ng hypothalamus, bakit ang baba ng hormones niya, negative feedback, it will now initiate again the next menstrual cycle. Now, Kung magkaroon ng fertilization at mabuntis yung babae, walang menstrual flow. Kasi walang mag-shed off na endometrium dahil kailangan yon para mag-continue ang growth and development ng products of conception, especially ng fetus. Physiology of conception begins with, as mentioned earlier, fertilization, the union of the egg and the sperm. And then, 
continuous to implantation hanggang maitanim na yung product doon sa uterus for growth and development, particularly in the endometrium. This picture depicts fertilization. The big circle at the center is the egg cell, while the many other small cells are the sperm cells. You can see there that the head of the sperm cells are attached to the layer of the egg. And you can also see the many flagella. Nangyayari ang fertilization sa ampula ng fallopian tube. Again, ito yung union ng egg and sperm. There are millions of sperms needed to penetrate the deep layers of the egg. So habang naka-attach yung maraming sperm cells na yan, unti-unti nilang binibreak yung layers ng egg. But just one sperm will succeed. And that one sperm, whoever will first um, penetrate the inside of the egg successfully, nagkaroon ng fertilization or uh, magkakaroon ng product, one egg is to one sperm, which is the zygote. Iba yung multiple pregnancies. No? If in case many sperm cells will enter, iba yung condition na yon. That is not possible. Kasi dapat one egg and one sperm lang. So again, iba yung kambal, iba yung triplet, iba yung um, happenings doon. And that will be discussed during your maternal and child nursing. Second is implantation. Kailangan ma-implant yung nabuong product doon sa fallopian tube. Therefore, magta-travel from the fallopian tube yung product from the fallopian tube going to the uterus. Initially, nag-start yung zygote no, during fertilization. Nagbumultiply siya na nagbumultiply hanggang maging morula. No, yung morula, nagkaroon na ng several cells. And then, nagpo-form ulit no hanggang magkaroon ng blastocyst. Si blastocyst nandiyan na yung products ng mabubuong fetus and other parts of conception. Yung blastocyst pag nakarating ng uterus, diyan siya mai-implant. Makikita niya may thick endometrium. And when implantation happens, itatanim niya yung sarili niya doon for nourishment, for blood supply, for growth and development, hanggang sa magkaroon na ng embryo. And ayan na yung waiting time na itanim na siya. The embryo now, unti-unti, pag yan ay naging 8 weeks na or 2 months na siyang naka-implant, you can now call that structure fetus. Ang waiting time is until 40 weeks or around 10 months. So halos ganyang katagal buntis ang babae dahil iniintay magmature yung fetus kung kailan kakayanin na niyang mabuhay extra uterine life. Pero hindi lahat ng babae nanganganak ng exactly 40 weeks or 10 months because the usual age of gestation kung saan mature enough na yung fetus to be expelled in the outside world is around 37 to 42 weeks AOG. May adjustment. Again, AOG is age of gestation. So, pag 37 to 42 weeks, yun yung kabuanan. And 37 weeks always falls on the ninth month. Kaya usually, yung ikasyam na buwan, yung kabuanan. But anytime during the month, pwedeng manak yung babae as an indication that the fetus is already mature. During pregnancy, there are changes on the mother, of course, psychologic changes to prepare the mother for the impending stress of labor, birth, delivery, as well as your motherhood role. And second are the many physiologic changes, such as GI. Maaaring sila ay magkaroon ng pagkahirap na dumumi dahil naiipit yung intestines, nababawasan ng peristalsis. Yung urinary system naman, maaaring madala silang maihi because of the pressure ng enlarging placenta sa bladder. 
yung respiratory system, uh, usually kapag third trimester na or malapit ng mga anak yung baby, yung fundus ng uterus, maaaring na compress yung diaphragm. Kaya pwedeng makaramdam yung babae ng shortness of breath. And lastly, cardiovascular system, including the blood supply and the pumping action of the mother's heart. Remember that the fetus lungs does not function. So all blood supply comes from the mother as supplied via the placenta. When should labor start? When we say labor, ito na yung series of events that will expel the fetus and all the other products of conception. Sino yung other products of conception aside from the fetus? We have the placenta, the umbilical cord, the membranes, and uh, including the amnion, chorion, and amniotic fluid. Kailan dapat mag-start mag ang labor? When the fetus is mature enough to cope with extra uterine life. At kailan nga yun? 37 to 42 weeks of pregnancy. Pag nag-uumpisa ng mag ang babae, there are four stages. Dilatation, when we talk about dilatation, we are talking about the cervical opening. Kailangan bumuka ang cervix para makalabas yung products of conception. Expulsion, yung mismong pag-ire, the act of delivery. The placental stage is yung release ng placenta. And lastly, postpartum stage is the first uh, 4 to 6 hours after birth kung saan babalik yung organs ni mommy to the pre-pregnancy state. That's the end of the reproductive system. Thank you very much.